Hi, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. Happy oh, Sabbath. it's good to see you again. Well, we're ready for a wonderful Sabbath experience. And so why don't we have an opening prayer and talk to Jesus together? Let's pray. Lord in heaven, thank you so much for blessing us in so many ways. And thank you now for the Sabbath hours that we can share together. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us important things in the Bible and also in nature. And we're going to learn a lot of those things today, maybe hear about what's going on in other parts of the world, too. We just know that you are a very, very active God in our lives, and we just want to learn all about you. And so we pray that you'll be very close to us and teach us these things. Help us to have a great time in Sabbath school today. And we thank you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So what are we going to do today, Miss Julie? Well, we have a great story for you coming up a little later, but it has to do with a miracle and in the life of Elisha and people that he spent time with. So I want you to listen carefully for the story. So we've chosen a song today that kind of goes with the fact that God cares about us no matter where we are, like he did for this special person in our story today. So our memory verse says this. It's found in 2 Kings 4.2. Elisha replied, how can I help you? Okay, you want to say it with me? Okay. Elisha, Elisha replied, replied, how, how can, can I, I help you? 2 Kings 4.2. So he wanted to help, and God was leading him to help a very special person today. So listen carefully to the stories, especially for that miracle. So Pastor Joe, let's sing from Psalm 121. And if you get a chance later today, I want you to go in your Bible. If you read, I want you to read it yourself. If you can't, have somebody help you read it. And these words come from the Psalm called, basically, he's ever over me, okay? So let's try the song. And that we? means he's always over me, he's right? He's always over us. Okay. All cool, right. let's go for it. You ready? Here we go. I'm going to try and keep my guitar out of your way today, if we can. Here we go. I will lift my eyes to the hills and their creator. Okay, have a great Sabbath school, you guys. We'll see you at the end. Bye-bye. Today we're going to talk about the word abide and what does it mean to abide in Jesus because we're encouraged to do that in the Bible. To me, abide means to stay in one place. Like, this is my house and I abide in it. That means I'm, I stay in it most of the time. Sometimes I travel, go visit other people, but I abide here or I live here is an easier way to think of it. Um, we've been abiding in our homes a lot since this COVID thing started and things are different with school right now because of that too, but just imagine what it was like when you did go to school or when you go you'll go to school again 
and you get to school the first day and you meet your new teacher. And her name is Mrs. Jones, let's say. And she talks to you and she tells you how glad she's going to be, how glad she is to be your new teacher and what a good year you're going to have and all the things you're going to learn. And she says to you, I make, I'm going to make a commitment to, to be your teacher all year long and to be here as often as I can. Well, the next day you get to school and there's a substitute there. That means a different adult will be there to teach you instead of Mrs. Jones. And the reason is because Mrs. Jones had to go to the beach and lay on the beach and swim in the ocean and have a relaxing day. Well, the next day you go to school and it's the substitute again because Mrs. Jones had to go shopping. The third day you go to school, substitute again. Mrs. Jones had to go play tennis. The fourth day you go to school, substitute again. Mrs. Jones had to finish her overdue book. So this goes on for about two weeks. At the end of the two weeks, when Mrs. Jones hasn't been there, except just that very, very first day, they have at school something called parent-teacher conferences. It's when you and your parents, like an open house, and you and your parents go to school, and so your parents can meet your teacher. And there's Mrs. Jones there to meet your parents. Well, you can't be too excited to, to introduce Mrs. Jones to your parents because you don't even really know her. It's like she's a stranger to you because she hasn't been abiding there with you in the classroom. And the same goes for our relationship with Jesus. When we make a commitment to him to abide in his heart or have him living in our heart, we make that commitment to stay with him, to spend time with him. And that way we really, really get to know him not like Mrs. Jones, who you didn't know after two weeks. But if we abide with Jesus, we can get to know him. And then after a while, he'll really seem like our friend because we know him so well. And he'll bring us so many blessings. Like he'll bring us, well, salvation is the biggest blessing and happiness. He'll help us bear fruit. That means he'll help us have peace and joy help us encourage other people. He'll give us power to overcome Satan. That's one of the great ones. And he'll help us love other people, even when we don't really feel like it. So it's important that you spend time with Jesus every day, somehow with prayer or Bible reading or singing songs, to abide with him so he'll be your forever friend. I hope you have a good Sabbath. Bye-bye. Okay, we're going to do Father Abraham, and I can't really do the motions, but you stand up and make sure you do them, okay? i got to get the right one. Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's go praise the Lord, right arm. Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right arm, left arm. Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot. Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Father Abraham had many sons. Sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, chin up, chin down. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. 
So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Chin up, chin down, turn around. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Chin up, chin down, turn around, sit down. What's the longest you've ever prayed for something? A week? A month? What about a year? Praying for a long time is something members of the Cardinal Seventh Day Adventist Church in Cuba know all about. For more than 30 years, this congregation has been praying for a new church. That's longer than you've been alive. Their small group started many years ago and built a small church. But as more people joined them for worship, there was no more space. The church was crowded and people were forced to sit outside. In Cuba, the government owns almost everything. A government is a group of people who lead the country. The government also controls a lot of how people live, where they can go, or even what food they can buy and when. This makes life difficult for the people who live there. Most people have very little money to live, so there's no money left over to build something as big as a church. The Cardinal's church members did the only thing they could, pray. For more than 30 years, members prayed that God would help them build a bigger church. Some members prayed so much that they got calluses, spots where the skin became hard on their knees. The group also reached out to Maranatha Volunteers International for help. At the time, Maranatha was building and fixing churches all over the island. Maybe Maranatha could help them too. So for years, Maranatha tried to build a bigger church for Cardenas. But the country wouldn't give permission to build. Finally, Maranatha President Don Noble went to Cuba to give them very bad news. I says, unfortunately, I have to tell you that right now we have neither permission nor the money to build this church. And the reaction that we got was something I've never seen before. I hope I don't see it again. It was the entire church just started crying, wailing, some of them. It was absolutely horrible. Everyone felt awful. Maranatha had been trying to build a new church for Cardenas for more than 15 years. Could it, should it really be over? Don asked for someone to pray, and a little girl named Dianellis volunteered. She went marching up the front very confident. She turned around and she folded her hands. I can still see her. She looked up, not down, she looked up. She says, dear Jesus, thank you for giving us a new church, amen. And I'm sitting there going, wow. Duh. I think God's going to answer that prayer. I mean, how's he going to say no? Dawn was right. God did answer her prayer and the prayers of all of those people. And a few years later, Maranatha volunteers arrived and built a beautiful new church in Cardenas. When the church was finally opened, more than 1,000 people traveled from all over the island to see the new church. It's a big building, one of the largest in town, and more than 500 people can sit inside. And although the members are excited about having places to sit, they're even more excited that they can now invite their neighbors and friends to church. They can't wait to share Jesus with their friends and tell them about how He answers prayers, even prayers that last for 30 years. So this song today talks about how we can be full of the oil, which represents God's Holy Spirit in our lives, 
Um, and when we ask for him to put oil in our lamps, it means that we want his spirit to be in our hearts. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Hallelujah, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. tell the people and be a fisher of men for him. This is a story about Elisha from 2 Kings, 2 Kings 4. Now one day, a wife of one of Elisha's friends from the Guild of Prophets said to Elisha, My husband is dead! You well know what a good man he was. He was so devoted to God. But now he's in debt. And he's there's a bad man, a, a debt man, who's going to come and take our children away as slaves because we can't pay our debts. What should I do? Well, Elisha said, Hmm... I wonder if I can be of help. What do you have in your house? What can I help you pay him with? Nothing, she said. We have nothing in the house. Well, she said, actually, I do have a little bit of oil. Well, here's what you have to do, said Elisha. Go up and down the street and borrow as many bowls and jugs and pitchers and jars from all your neighbors. Get as many as you can get into your house. Then come home and lock the door behind you. Pour oil into each container. And when each is full, set it to the side and get the new one. Fill it up, set it to the side, and get another empty one out. She did what Elijah, Elisha said. She locked the door behind her, and her sons, as they brought the empty containers to her, kept being amazed because they kept being filled to the brim with more and more oil. And when all the jugs and bowls were full, she said to one of her sons, another jug, please. He said, that's it, Mom. There are no more jugs, no more pitchers, no more bowls, no more jars, nothing left for us to fill with oil. And then the oil stopped. So she went out of the house, she unlocked the door, she creeped around the corner, she found Elisha, and she told him the whole story of what happened. And he said, now, Go and sell all the oil and make good on your debts and live with you on, and your sons on what is left. Okay, boys and girls, well, that was a wonderful time we had together at Sabbath School. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of our Sabbath School time together today. Why don't we close with a word of prayer, Miss Julie? Let's bow our heads together. Father God, we praise you for the miracles that we read about in the Bible. We praise you for the miracles we see in our own lives. Help us to realize that you are with us every moment. You're always over us, just like the psalmist wrote. And Father, we just ask that you'll go with the boys and girls 
Keep them safe, Lord, and watch over their parents and their grandparents and whoever they're spending time with. Bless them and keep them, Lord, yes. until we can meet again. And we praise you for all good things come from you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, boys and girls, have a great rest of the Sabbath. All we'll right. see you later. Take care. Bye. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Trust in the Lord.